good and bad fiction films made by non-fiction filmmakers? Well, there's a lot of uh, cases where a documentary filmmaker will make a fiction film, and they'll just not be at all suited for that. I mean, like, I think the most famous one is Joe Berlinger, who made Paradise Lost with Bruce Sanofsky. He often often made the sequel to Blair Witch. Yep. Um, oh, really? I didn't yeah, know that. That was him. And then he came right back to like Metallica movies. And yep, that was amazing. That was an amazing film. Um, and then there's also like you know Penelope Spheris, right. like she mm -hmm. makes documentaries and then goes off to make like Wayne's World, pure bad comedies, pure crap, like yeah. Beverly Hillbillies, senseless. And well, she did Wayne's World, which is oh yeah, that's yeah, that's that's a, that's that was, yeah that, In fact, I believe that was in the, that was the highest grossing film directed by a woman in the nineties. Yeah. yeah, I think that's true. Michael Apted is another one who makes yeah, the, right. the up movies, and he just makes. Well, he actually makes like middle ground. Yeah, the middle crap. Like, work, Hollywood. Right? Yeah, he makes stuff. Stuff. Like I think like Nell was the worst film that he's mm -hmm. made. He's he did. Uh, didn't he do Gorillas in the Mist? Sure did. He did a James Bond movie. The world is not enough. Uh, did he do one of the Harry Potters? No, no he did one of the Narnia films. Narnia. Yeah. He did yeah. the Voyage That's of the right, Dawn That's right, he did the Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Mm -hmm. Which was really bad. So, so, yeah, so we're trying to stuff. figure out. I actually worked for one? Michael Apted very yeah. briefly. And really? Yeah, and he, the sense I got from talking to people around him was that he does that he does those movies so he can make the other movies. Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. totally. That it's not, he has, like, there's nothing compelling him to make Narnia. Yeah. Other than wanting to make like up movies or some yeah. of the other little like documentary things yeah. he does that nobody sees. He's, he's more like a technician for those films, you know. He keeps just like, it's like, oh, I, I interviewed him one time and I asked him about like, the Bond movies. He's just like, you know, it's just a well oiled machine, he's just there. He's like, oh, well, I want to make this film and it seemed like nice and that's about it. But then like his real passion is the up movies, of yeah. course. It's actually not a bad way to direct a Bond movie because I think the world is not enough is a pretty good one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's because it's so it feels like a well oiled machine. You're like, okay. I mean, cool. it's overcoming Denise Richards as Christmas Jones. So, yeah, I mean, I thought Christmas only came once a year. That's the line. <laughs> is that a line? Do you? Uh, oh, yeah. That's the last line. Do you remember Michael Moore's one fiction film? Yeah, Canadian Bacon. Canadian, Canadian Bacon, Bacon, that's right. You guys know about Errol Morris's John Candy's one? I was gonna, I was gonna ask if anybody knows if Errol Morris has ever done a fiction film. He has. Yeah. It's called The Dark Wind. Lou Diamond Phillips in it. You've never heard of it, and I've never seen it, and no one has seen it. Oh my I've God. never seen it, but I. It's like a film school. I can like, picture the. Yeah, I can picture the VHS box. Yeah. It's like a. It's and I remember blue. almost renting it one night, but then thinking. No, Phillips, you got you got me on the first power, and you're not gonna get me on the dark wind. First power. <laughs> I saw the first power, I've and I, I was just like, this looks a lot like the first power. <laughs> it's Errol Morris's the first power. Wow. <laughs> if <laughs> answering the time, the old cinematic question, what would have happened if Errol Morris had done the first power? <laughs> now we know. Oh man, what about Herzog's fiction movies? Or not, or you know, I, I guess they're not I, necessarily. I, I think he's a fiction filmmaker that makes documentaries what, actually. Isn't he both? I mean, because no. it's like, it depends on the movie because like, his documentaries are always a bit fiction and his fiction films are always a bit documentary. Do you yeah. think they're different skill sets? Or do you think. Oh, they're definitely there's... different. I can tell you from personal experience they're different skill sets. I mean, like, they're, because the, the, the amount of planning that goes into a fiction film. I mean, uh, in terms of the film being kind of done, you know, at least at some level, even if it's just a conceptual level, when you know other people get there, uh, I think there are so many other ways to make documentary and other ways to um, organize conceptually and literally how documentaries work. I just don't think it translates at all to the kinds of skills that you tend to need making fiction films. I mean, there may be some some sort of hybrid exceptions, and I think about like Gus Van Sant to do these kind of hybridy like improv stuff but for the most part I mean you need a story and you need a script <laughs> and you need actors and you need to know how to run a crew and that just really does isn't the same in documentary at all and especially for a lot of kinds of documentary it's um it's it's you know it's a completely different mode of working I think well I've done know. a you've done both right? yeah I've done both and I've I'm working on a fiction film now that I've shot kind of in a documentary style and but not in the way that like you think mm -hmm. like hand not handheld yeah. I just shot lots of footage and I shot the actors when they didn't know I was shooting mm -hmm. them and I ended up with a mountain of footage I yeah. have like 72 hours of footage oh, which doesn't happen on fiction Most films fiction films, yeah. really and I'm the way I'm editing it is the same way that I've approached editing documentaries that I'm kind of carving it uh, I think I think historically footage. I think that, that direct cinema had a real impact on how fiction films are shot I mean it used right. to be that you know yeah. fiction films had a much lower shooting ratio and now even fiction films have a higher shooting ratio because yeah. of documentaries and films so mm -hmm. they're, yeah. I think they're converging more and more yeah. as as video becomes cheaper than film and yeah. 
I, I worked for uh, Ken Burns for a summer actually, and um, that I was he was working on his war movie, his World War II movie, and that was actually probably as uh, I mean the, the screenplay was there, and it was really just fill in the blanks. I mean it's like they have the voiceover. Um, now I happen to think that what, what ended up happening on that film that I thought was interesting was I was reading the script before you know I was I was like logging the footage for that. And I was reading the script, and I was like, "This is really problematic. Like this, like if this were a fiction script, I would have real problems with it. And as a documentary, I don't know what to think because it's like." Um, and then I saw the final product, and they had hours and hours of this archival footage, and I'm like, "How are they gonna put all this into this, like, really pat narrative that they've created around the World War II?" And they really didn't. Like, it really feels very scattershot, like how they ended up editing the footage together. And I feel like you could actually watch that film, Silent, and it'd be a really interesting experimental documentary about World War II. <laughs> you know, it's like, it, because it's so sprawling. Um, so it's almost like doing doing both um, it kind of ended up with a more interesting film. <laughs> like, the really overly plotted and overly written uh, base, and then just so much footage. I mean, like, endless amounts of footage. It's very interesting. Thank you.